And joining us now on the line from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, there is Stephen Lewis, the health policy consultant and former CEO of the Health Services Utilization and Research Commission in Saskatchewan. Stephen, good to have you on the program again. How are you doing? Very well, thanks, Steve. Glad to hear it. Let us just make sure we're all speaking the same language tonight for starters. When we say e-health, what do we mean? We're talking about turning health information into an electronic format. Uh, it's literally like having your electronic bank record. Uh, it's, it's doing away with paper and putting everything into essentially into computers using software, hardware, and so forth. So give me some examples here. If you're talking about a comprehensive e-health system, what does that actually look like? Well, we'll talk about it at two levels. At the patient level, it means that in your physician's office or in your primary care clinic, all of your health information will be recorded electronically, and it'll be on a database, and it'll have various fields that have your demographic information, your age, your name, your height, your weight, and so forth. Then all of your diagnostic information and your treatment in information, including your drug prescriptions, lab tests, and so on. At the system level, when you go into a hospital or a long-term care facility, your records will be electronic there too. So in a hospital, as, as is the case throughout most of the country now, because it's mostly electronic in the, in the hospital setting, all of the health information that people collect on patients will be entered into computers in a record format. So a bit of a pedestrian question here, but does this information exist on, say, a smart card that I keep in my wallet, or is this something that is more in a massive system somewhere in the internet world, or what is it? Well, it would, mostly in Canada, we don't have smart cards, although conceivably you could. You could uh, record the information on a card with a magnetic strip that looks just like your, your credit card. But mainly the information is housed in computers. If it's an office-based system, uh, it'll be entered into an office computer, which may connect to other computers uh, to receive information from labor laboratories and diagnostic imaging clinics and so on. If it's in a hospital, it'll tend to reside on a, on a mainframe computer, just like it would on any business. Okay. Would e-health affect the delivery of health care? Absolutely. Uh, just imagine a, a few examples. You've got an electronic health record, and let's say you're receiving care from two or three providers. You may have a primary care doctor, you may go to a rehabilitation clinic, and you may be seeing a specialist. In a, in a wired world, in an e-health world, that electronic health record would be available to all of those providers on a need-to-know basis so they know what each other is doing. They can check to see what each other is prescribing, what treatments you're following, what advice you may have been given, and so on, so it would much, it much better integrate your care. Uh, then when you go into the hospital, uh, if you have some procedures done, the information can be downloaded from the hospital into your physician's office. Uh, so the physician knows everything about your stay in the hospital, all of the procedures you underwent, how you progressed through there. So it, it can save an awful lot of time. Just one quick example, uh, in Denmark, uh, where 98% of physicians use an electronic medical record in their offices, uh, it, the physicians estimate they save about an hour a day just in not having to phone other facilities and institutions to get information because it's available instantly electronically. Hmm. Okay, so I can certainly see how it would change the life of the caregiver, but how about the patient? Would the patient notice any difference? Well, a few things. First of all, the patient uh, isn't going to have to tell the same story several times, as, as is often the case now, because everybody the patient sees will presumably have the same information. Uh, secondly, the patient won't likely have to go, uh, undergo so many repeat exams or repeat tests, because again, those test results won't be stuck in a file somewhere and have to be faxed or couriered over. They'll be available electronically, so it's much more convenient. And I think the third thing the patient's going to notice in some ways is, is much better care. Uh, as an example, if you look at drugs, uh, you can put into the electronic system uh, software known as decision support software. And what that does is it, it lists all of the drugs that are likely to be prescribed and it alerts you to which ones are contraindicated because they don't, they don't fit well together and there'll be some adverse reactions if you prescribe one drug in combination with another. It can alert you to dosages if you have to have different doses for young people or old people, so when you're prescribing you don't make mistakes that way. And you can prevent a lot of harm just by using electronic technology to help the system work smarter. Well, that's okay. You've anticipated where I wanted to go next because I, my suspicion is there are plenty of people watching this broadcast right now who are on some kind of medication, in some cases on many different kinds of medication. And having that information on e-health you think could make a, a, a big difference in the kind of care they get? 
It could make a big difference, uh, certainly in prescribing, because it's very difficult for any physician, however knowledgeable, uh, to keep literally several thousand uh, drugs uh, in his or her brain uh, and keep them straight and figure out which ones should and shouldn't be uh, prescribed in combination. So it's helping healthcare providers work a lot smarter by doing some of that computational work. So you don't have to remember so much. You actually have decision support guides built right into the software so that when you do push a button or click the mouse and say, I want to prescribe this drug, if it shouldn't be prescribed because of the person's condition or because there are other prescriptions that the cur person is currently taking, it can be an automatic alert. Okay, so I think that's, there's a lot of safety improvement there. That's interesting because the anecdote you frequently hear at healthcare conferences, for example, is the person showing up with their parent who may be in their you know, 70s, 80s or beyond. Uh, the first question the doctor asks is, what kind of medication is your mom or dad on? And the answer is, right. I, my gosh, I have no idea. Uh, you're saying potentially those days could be gone because the hospital will already have access to that information? Potentially, absolutely. Uh, I mean, there are systems in the country right now where uh, you can get access to all the prescriptions that a person may be on. But the, the next frontier really is the physician's office. Uh, Canada is last in the G7 countries in the number of installed systems, electronic medical records in physician's offices. We're now working to move that out across the country and, and Richard Alvarez, of course, from Infoway is, is central to that. Uh, but it is still tomorrow's world for most Canadians, unfortunately. Richard Alvarez is going to be on the program right after we're done, so stand by Richard Alvarez on the other side of the studio. Let me read you something that is an excerpt from a website that follows this stuff. Uh, on the flip side of increased digitization and increased e-health, here's how the quote goes. Although a majority of marketers have embraced online social media and user-generated content efforts, one industry is conspicuously not taking advantage of the gold rush, and that's pharmaceuticals. Drug brand websites almost never carry the features that marketers usually are desperate to give their customers, namely bulletin boards, chat rooms, blogs, and web page hosting. The reason? Marketers fear that user-generated content will include complaints about injuries caused by their drug side effects. Thus, drug marketers have stuck with a decidedly Web 1.0 model in which customer interaction is kept to an absolute minimum. Uh, does the person, this is off brandweek.com from uh, earlier this month, uh, does the writer have a point here? Well, it's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a different issue. I mean, that is, uh, there is a consumer revolution, there is a web-based revolution whereby people are exchanging all sorts of information about everything, including health and health care. So, uh, will people report to each other in support groups, in chat groups about drug interactions and adverse events that, that come from, from prescribed drugs, sure they will. Uh, will this make the pharmaceutical industry nervous? Sure it will, because this is information that they can't control. It's not science per se, but it is, it is a way of tracking, or is, is, is at least a way of some people reporting when things aren't going particularly well. And it is a kind of consumer empowerment. I don't think we've begun to see the beginning of this revolution yet, and it's going to get a lot larger uh, how the system will respond it will, will be quite interesting. It's a bit of a tangent to the notion of whether an electronic health record or an electronic medical record is going to improve the system. I don't think there's any question that, that the system is unlikely to improve without it, but there are these ancillary issues that will come into play for sure. But in your experience, is it true that pharmaceutical, the, the phar big pharma as they like to call it, has been kind of notoriously not on side for e-health because of the reasons suggested in this quote? Well, I, I think, don't think Big Pharma is adverse to having information. Uh, it can inform its research and, and development agenda uh, based on electronically gathered information and so on. Uh, but of course, pharmaceutical companies want to sell drugs and they want to present their drugs in the best possible light. And one thing that an electronic health record system can do and track is adverse drug reactions in real time. That is, if you are able to take from the an electronic medical record the information uh, from individual charts, medical charts, uh, that reveals an adverse event, you can actually send out alerts and you can reconsider guidelines for prescribing a lot quicker. Now, I think responsible pharma will say that's a very good thing because responsible pharmaceutical companies don't want people harmed by drugs either. 
But of course, there is a battle for information and who controls it and what kind of information is put in the public domain. And there are lots of things in the world that make the pharmaceutical industry nervous, but that doesn't mean that uh, the world isn't going to unfold that way. And we'll be, we will be much more, uh, we will have a much richer information environment once the world is fully wired. And theoretically, doctors should be prescribing more efficaciously as well, wouldn't they? huge benefits for individual physicians. As I said before, e even the best physicians can't possibly keep track of all of the drugs that, that are in development or that are new and, and the old ones and figure out which ones are best and which ones work well in combination. Uh, one of the great advantages of this is if you can aggregate the information from medical practices, you can do some very good outcomes analysis of which drugs are most effective in which circumstances. You can really fine tune prescribing so that it's both safer for the, for the patient, it's more effective for the patient, and it's more efficient for the system because right now we have a, a large number of hospital admissions, especially in the elderly, that are due to adverse drug events, uh, contraindications, things that shouldn't happen, or many things that, that, that shouldn't happen and could be possibly prevented with an electronic and good decision support system. So there are huge benefits there all around. Understood. I read a statistic the other day that I can't believe is true, but you never know. I, I read that 80% of the people in the province of Ontario who are over the age of 65 are dealing with a chronic disease in their life, anything from diabetes to heart condition to whatever. And if that's the case, th these are the people presumably who use our health care system the most, and I wonder, does eHealth have something to say to them most particularly? Huge benefits to them in, in a few ways. Uh, first of all, um, most people, particularly when they get over 80 and 85, will have multiple chronic diseases. They may have arthritis, they may also have diabetes, they may have a little congestive heart failure. So managing people with several diseases is a lot more complicated than people who just have one. They're very likely to have more than one provider, they're very likely to see specialists from time to time, and it's very important that everybody be on the same page in terms of what their treatment is and what advice they're giving in terms of self-managing the condition. So this is where e-health combined with a primary health care revolution is going to have enormous benefits for society if we do it right. Uh, the other benefit of course is in uh, tracking where these people are receiving services and where it's most effective and you can get some efficiencies there. So for instance if you have really good information consolidated in electronic health records and the parts of the system are talking to each other we may be able to manage a lot more complex cases in the primary care clinic instead of shunting them off to specialists uh, qu quite regularly. When you fragment the care, even when it's well-intentioned and expert, you can get into some unintentional trouble. So I think chronic disease management will really, be a bene will really benefit hugely from the electronic revolution. Now, Ontario's Ministry of Health, of course, has a, a wait time strategy that it's had in place for a number of years. And I think it's their position that eHealth the steps that have been taken so far have made a difference to making that service much more effective than it might otherwise be. Can you explain how that is? It's a little complicated, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. I mean, first of all, uh, wait times occur for two reasons. One is if you don't have enough capacity to meet your need. And if that's the case, you will never solve a wait time problem. But we have a pretty abundant health care system, and there is lots of people, myself included, who think that we have enough health care. It's just that it's not as efficient as it could be and the parts of the system don't always talk to each other. Where you have wait times uh, that are a management or an engineering issue, we're really talking about the flow of patients, either from the community to the physician's office to the specialist, or from the community to the hospital for a procedure, or from the community to home care to long-term institutional care. And what eHealth allows you to do is it, it, uh, it collects the information that allows you to manage those flows better. So if you can anticipate a, a surge in demand in the winter uh, of flu cases, you can adjust your hospital bed supply so that if you have more people showing up at the emergency room who are elderly and quite sick, then you can free up more beds for them to, uh, to get in without impeding anybody else's access to health care. If you know that there are more people waiting in one community than another, and everybody, including prospective patients, can have that information online, people can choose to go one place with a shorter wait time instead of the regular place they might want to have care and wait a few months. And the final thing you can do is create some computer models of how a certain need for health care translates into need for medical care, rehabilitation, long-term care, hospital care, and then you can plan better for the future. So again, in its ideal form, I think it can really help 
to solve the wait time issue. Okay. 